My name's Robert Critch. I'm a Gunai Kurnai person. I'm a descendant of uh, Percy Pepper and Lucy Thorpe Pepper. We're here at the Shrine of Remembrance today uh, looking at uh, Great Grandfather's War Service and uh, how we felt after that. And uh, just a bit of history, my grandmother was Alice Pepper, one of his daughters, and my mother is Audrey Lucy Critch. Yeah, he joined up uh, in 1916 uh, at Warrnambool and uh, went overseas in 1917, I think it was. And um, he fought in France uh, at the Somme and one other place, Villeneuve or something, and um, was injured over there with uh, a shr shrapnel wound to the head and um, eventually uh, returned to Australia after requesting uh, leave to come back because of his uh, chronic uh, rheumatism and the fact that his wife was very ill back in Australia and uh, needed support looking after their children as they weren't uh, allowed on the mission because being half, half caste Aboriginals. And um, so eventually the army uh, allowed him to come back home to Australia. Yeah, when my great grandfather, uh, Percy Pepper, returned from the war, and um, he um, got a soldier settlement eventually, and uh, he'd made friendships in the war with other soldiers that he uh, valued uh, for, for a long, long time and uh, worked with uh, one or two of them trying to get their farms going as well as his own uh, yeah. when things were, were tight and uh, those friendships stayed with him right till, till he passed away. Oh. Oh, my name's Glennis Watts and I'm a Gunnar woman from Gippsland. My grandparents were Percy and Lucy Pepper and here we are at their house that they built here in Koorirup. I think Grandfather Percy went to war. He was, he'd actually been down in Lake, Lake Tyres where he had some family that had gone to war. My grandmother's brother had gone to war and he was in France. And they, he decided to take my grandmother down to um, Warrnambool, down that area, to Gunditjmara country. And the land down there, he thought it would be warmer for her because she wasn't really well and he enlisted while he was in Warrnambool to go to war. And I think the reasons was because he really fought, thought, you know, Australia was worth fighting for. The laws prohibited any full-blooded Aboriginal person from, from signing up and going to war, whereas those that were classed as half-caste uh, were easy to assimilate into and, and looked like more, more like the European side of our um, country. And that was, so that made it easier for him to be accepted into the armed forces. The reason why he joined uh, was, I would assume, because he was so um, much like a, a European person rather than an Aboriginal person in skin tone, and uh, hoping to make a, some contribution to a, a better existence for his uh, wife and children at the time, uh, because it was hard to, to survive. And uh, so. I can only think that's why he joined, joined up and fought for the, for the country. Grandfather Pepper moved here um, and was given this land as a soldier settlement property and he had to work and pay for it still. I don't really understand the reasons how they're given land and then they still have to pay for the land. Um, they went and fought for country so there's a big issue there, I suppose, that they still had to pay for the land, even though they fought for the land. Great-grandfather Pepper's um, soldier settlement was in um, Koorirup, and it was actually in swampland. And um, he had, after a little while, he had two or three year, good years of uh, cropping potatoes and, uh, and other things. And then uh, they had two years of uh, very wet seasons and made the ground unworkable, uh, which eventually uh, cost him to lose the, uh, the land again. And he wrote to uh, one of the uh, ministers for Aboriginal Affairs to see if he could actually swap his land for another one uh, so he could continue to support his family, but that was rejected. And um, he... Um, 
in the end uh, felt that he'd had his land taken away from him twice uh, in, the, in the time of white settlement. Percy Pepper wrote again to George Prendergast, newly elected Premier of Victoria, on the 18th of July 1924, to the Premier, Mr Prendergast, I am pleased to see that by today's paper you are Premier, wishing you and your party every success. Now I am writing to you again as Waite tells with us struggling soldier settlers and shall give you, sir, the full details of our experience at Kui Rup. Also the struggle I have had for the last six years I took over this block, 1918, and was rather late and the land had to be fallowed, no house was on it. I was staying with my family at another returned soldier's place. These soldiers have left the block on the account of floods. Three of us came onto one estate, two of us have gone. I was left struggling al alone as I have had a family of seven children and a wife who has suffered from then to the 29th of November of 1923 when she died. My I would like to have a smaller place in another locality. This land was my great grandfather's and the white people took it. Why not, as I am the only half-caste Australian Aboriginal that has tried and worked on the land. I have always worked for my living and I could do much harder work now than I could do when I went to the wall. I will admit the place was too big for me and the ground here it takes a lot of working. So it's very expensive as manure has to be used. And I would exchange it for a smaller place. So what he's saying there is that land was our great grandfather's land and why did they take it from him and now they're doing the, exactly the same thing. His wife had just died, my grandmother had just passed away, his children he had being looked after by great grandparents and, and family up in Gippsland, some of them. He had a couple with, them, with him and here he was trying, the land was flooded and here he, the government were, he was asking the government to give him longer so he could actually sell the land himself rather than them take it from him and sell it. And then even so, we don't know whether he got anything back in return for the work that he'd put in for the house that he'd built or anything. And the government then turned around and said no, they were going to do it anyway. And it was all at the time when he'd you know, they were fighting even to try and get my grandmother buried back at Lake Tyres. And so that wasn't going to happen and didn't happen. She was buried in Pakenham. So all the anguish, it really makes me feel like someone's reached in, tugging at my heartstrings and really squeezing the heart because you can feel the anguish in him. They did go back to uh, being controlled by the government under the rules of the day and uh, they weren't allowed to go where they wanted to, uh, which is back on country, back to where their family was, where great grandmother Lucy's parents were um, uh, buried, and that. So it, it, I think he was hoping things would change uh, after the war service, but evidence shows that it, it hadn't, and uh, which is a shame.